James Arness is Marshal Matt Dillon. They were looking for me. They're going to be back. On Gunsmoke. That's right. Weekdays at 1 on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to Connect With Me live on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6. If you have an antenna, you'll not want to miss today's show. He's the new football coach at Fresno State. We're pleased to have him here in our studio live. Tim DeRuder will be along in just a moment. Stay tuned. If you want to call the program, it's 559-265-4331. A lot to get to today with Tim DeRuder. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the program. I'm John Malos. Glad you could join us on this Wednesday morning here live from the showroom floor at Ventura TV. We're here in each and every day. Hey, if it's me TV, it's Connect With Me. And today we're going to connect with Tim DeRuder, the new football coach at Fresno State. Coach, thanks for joining us. No problem, John. Great hey, to be I here. appreciate you being here. I know your schedule is very busy at this time of year. But doggone it, we only have a half an hour. <laughs> so Well, hopefully we can cover enough topics that uh, people get to know me better. I, I hope so. Let's get right to it. I'm going to ask you about feeling the pressure of stepping into this situation, not only from the alumni, from the press, the fans, everywhere around you, you're feeling pressure as being the new coach, filling the spot that Pat Hill left vacant. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, you, you look at what uh, Coach Hill was able to do, Coach Sweeney before that. They've set a pretty high bar. And so there's, there's obviously pressure coming here. Uh, but as a football coach, if you want to be a head coach at the Division One level, you want that sense of excitement. You want that pressure because there's expectations that are involved with it. And if you go to a place where the ex expectations are low, there's not any pressure. I don't want that. Why did you want the pressure? I don't know. Some people are wired differently. Um, <laughs> I'm one of those guys that... Uh, I want to do things a little bit differently. I like striving for championships, and if you're going to do that, if you're going to put your chin out there, there's some pressure involved. A lot of people in Fresno watching very intently as you were introduced as the new football coach at Fresno State. We have a piece of video okay. we want you to listen to right now. Let's uh, turn around and look at the monitor here. Here's what you had to Force say Academy. at your press conference. Where we Force Academy. Where do we go from here? My plan is to build a championship football team. Uh, we're going to build a team that's going to win over the hearts and minds of the people in the Valley. Uh, we want the Red Wave to understand that this is their team. This is the Valley's team. And we're going to build a program and build a team that they are all going to be proud of. Your reaction to what you said in terms of building a team that you're going to be proud of, but everyone else can be proud of as well. Well, I think college football has got a unique uh, position to, to rally a community. And you, you, again, you look at what Coach Sweeney and what Coach Hill was able to do. We feel we can do the exact same thing by reaching out to the community in all the different uh, venues that we go to with our players, with our staff so that they can get to know us, but then on Saturdays come this fall, make it the place to be, and I think we can do that. All right. We're going to continue our conversation with Tim DeRuder, the new head football coach at Fresno State, and we're pleased that he was able to take the time and join us today here on Connect With Me. You're watching us live on Comcast MeTV. We'll be back in just a moment. Vanting stainless steel appliances? V makes stainless painless. Right now, Stainless is a steal at Ventura TV Video Appliance. Why not upgrade every appliance in the kitchen? Got it? Like Frigidaire's 30-inch stainless steel electric cooktop, now just $3.49. And Frigidaire's 18-cubic-foot refrigerator with glass shelves is only $5.99. Upgrade to Stainless Steel at Ventura TV Video Appliance today and save. This guy is great. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, Tim DeRuder, the head football coach at Fresno State, is with us here in the studio. And if you want to call and ask a question, don't see the phone lines lighting up just yet. It's 265-4331. Uh, Tim, thanks again for joining us. And I want to get right to another soundbite. At your news conference, uh, introduced as the new head football coach, I know your family was there, your friends were there, you were excited. Let's turn to the monitor and listen to what you had to say on this one. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going to play tough, physical, fundamental football that Fresno State has traditionally known, and, and we are going to continue down that path. Offensively, we are going to spread the field. We're going to spread it vertically and horizontally. And most importantly, we're going to play with tempo. Uh, as a defensive coordinator, I know how that can stress you trying to make calls, trying to get uh, guys on the field that, are, that can properly match up. And we're going to do things on and off the field all the time with tempo. There's not going to be a lot of standing around at practice, in the weight room. We are going to go fast all the time. And that's going to be a trademark. Our fans are going to be excited because you're going to see things happening at a pace, for, quite frankly, you haven't seen in a long, long time. Well, can you expand on that a little bit? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Uh, being in the Big 12, a lot of the programs we've had to go against, the Baylors, the Oklahoma States, the Texas Techs, they've made a signature and made it tough on defensive coordinators by, by running an up-tempo spread style. Um, as I've you know been in this business for 20-something years, I know that's tough to defend. And so to bring that here and have that on the team that I'm back in, I'm very, very excited about. It's going to be up-tempo. You call it the spread offense, mm -hmm. right? Exactly what does that mean? Well, what we're talking about is most of the time we're going to be in the shotgun. We'll have three or four wide receivers on the field. And so when you one talk, running back and with one running back, correct. Okay. And so what you do is you spread people out horizontally. We'll have receivers basically on the sidelines, slots inside of them. And so defensive has got to spread out to match up. And you just count the numbers as, as the quarterback. No huddle. It'll be no huddle, and the up-tempo part is what's going to stress people. All right. Chris Pacheco was here as our guest on Monday, and he was telling me, you know, as a former player, that kind of offense, and I'm just playing devil's advocate right. here, puts a lot of stress on your defense because they get very little rest on the sidelines. It can, potentially. Uh, but if we do a great job of converting third downs, of making big plays, but then changing our tempo up at times you absolutely can can rest it uh, a defense and you've got to manage the time while we will be no huddle it won't constantly be at the same tempo we'll vary things can you control the football control the football game with a with a, uh, a, a, a wide open offense like that up tempo game much like you control a game when you run the football it's it's a little bit different but absolutely it, it all comes down to execution and what happens is defenses, they've got to make decisions on what they're going to do. When you've got four wide receivers like we do with the speed and the ability, if they don't cover those guys, we'll take advantage of that. If they do, you got Robbie Rouse to run the football. We're still going to be a running football team. We're not, we're not going to be a June Jones style of spread. We're going to throw it 90% of the time. We'll probably be about a 50-50 mix. But you're saying you can control it through the air. Absolutely and not, and not uh, put any kind of pressure on your defense by, by getting tired. Well, potentially you can if, if yeah. you're going three and out, but that's not something we're, we're planning well, on don't, doing. You're not planning on going oh, three and out. Absolutely, absolutely not. <laughs> At least but, I don't think so. And, and, you know, with a guy like Derek Carr and the receivers we have, we've got some guys that are very capable, very dependable, and, and we plan on riding the, uh, those guys uh, this fall. All right, spring practice. You had four weeks, 13 practices. Was there any confusion on the field with that spread offense and those players trying that, that new offense? Is there a learning curve? Absolutely. Anytime you switch as dramatically or, or schematically what we switch from going to a, from a pro-style offense to a spread, uh, there's, there is a learning curve. And so early in the spring, guys are running around thinking. We've got to get them through 29 practices this fall to where they're no longer thinking, where they're just reacting. And, and I have confidence in our staff and our players that we'll get there. Is that the problem right now? They're thinking and not reacting? Oh, that's part of the problem. But, but offenses, uh, especially tempo offenses, there's, there's a lot of timing that's involved. And part of that is getting guys in new positions and understanding without thinking so that the timing is crisp. Um, when, you, when you add that to defensively, we've changed schemes. And so we're running some things from a disguise standpoint and coverage standpoint that we're not going to see most of the time. And so that combination makes it tough. If you look at any offense out there in the country when it's a new installation, everybody's going through these growing pains. Is it possible, Coach, that perhaps you're throwing too much at your players at one time? Um, yeah, anything's possible. But uh, I think that people will, will realize this fall we'll have success, and uh, uh, I, th I think that'll justify why we've done this. Going from a 4-3 to a 3-4 mm -hmm. this year on defense, mm -hmm. talk about that. Well, uh, at a number of stops along the way. That's, why, that, I that, guess, that, is the question. Well, 
Well, uh, that's been my my uh, defensive choice as as I've you know been a defensive coordinator for 16 years. Uh, in most places, I've gone from a four man front, whether it's four two or four three, to a three four. What's uh, the advantage of having a three four? Well, th there's a few. Uh, going against spread offenses, which is kind of the new vogue in in college football, you can take out a fourth defensive end who typically is not going to be as athletic as an outside linebacker or nickelback and put that person in. Other things schematically, what you're able to do is because you've got three down linemen, any one of those four linebackers can be the fourth rusher or a safety or a corner, and so your disguise is much better. If you look at the National Football League, over half of the teams in the league now are, going, are basing out of a 3-4 defense. And in the National Football League, everyone's going to spread offense. It sounds like you're telling me you have more options oh, on defense a absolutely. than you do with a 4-3. Absolutely. Uh, when you've got four down guys, typically those guys aren't cover guys. When you get right. a linebacker who's kind of a combination guy, those guys give you a lot of flexibility on different, uh, different types of attacks to be able to defend them. Wild guess, because I never played defense, but is it easier for a defensive player in a 3-4 uh, perhaps to read, say, an audible from the offense? Well, I don't know or about no, that so much. No. I, I think it's more, there, there's a little bit more personality involved in it. Uh, we will have a lot of disguise and a lot of flexibility on our defensive personnel once right. they understand our package of how to put some stresses on an offense to give them looks that they're not necessarily used to seeing. And they're going to give the offense a look that they're not used to. Absolutely. That's the key to the 3-4, Absolutely. Right? Over the 4-3. Absolutely. All right. We're going to continue our conversation here with Tim DeRuiter. He's the head football coach. Hey, you know what? Football season is not all that far away. I'm sure Tim knows that better than anybody. The coach is going to be right back with me. You're watching Connect with me, and we're back in just a moment. Vanting stainless steel appliances? We make stainless painless. Right now, stainless is a steal at Ventura TV Video Appliance. Why not upgrade every appliance in the kitchen? Got it? Like Frigidaire's 30-inch sealed burner gas cooktop, now just $4.49. And Whirlpool side-by-side -side with dispensers, crushed ice, and water filtration is only $9.99. Upgrade to stainless steel at Ventura TV Video Appliance today and save. This guy is great. A world of sports on this day on Connect With Me. It doesn't get any bigger than Fresno State football right here in our own city. And Tim DeRuiter, the new head football coach, is here. And again, Coach, thanks for taking the time. We know how busy you are with recruiting and everything. Take no you problem. back to your news conference again because I was, I was glued to the tube watching this. I even watched it on the Internet about ten <laughs> times because I'm so interested in, in you coming here and taking over this football program. Another reaction to what you had to say back at your news conference. Coach Hill has done tremendous things here. Uh, he's really done a great job laying the foundation of which to build on. A lot of times when you get a chance as an assistant to be become a head coach, you take over a program that quite frankly is, is not anywhere near the shape that this program is in. Uh, coach Hill is an icon uh, and will always be an icon here and, and I thank him for all of his service uh, and what he's done here for, for the Valley and, and for the Fresno State uh, program. Coach, I've got to ask you, did Coach Hill get a raw deal here in Fresno, do you think? Well, I, I don't believe so. I, I think what happens is any time uh, a head coach stays more than 10 years, uh, people's expectations uh, and, and their patience tends to wane. You know, the, the, He set the bar so high that when you weren't winning 10, 11 games, people are disappointed. Well, I, I love that expectation, but, but you know, Realistically, that's not going to happen all the time. There's other people out there that, that have facilities and great coaches that you got to compete against. And you look at his record, winning over 60% of his games, he had quite a run. And the academic part of it, too. He brought those grades up, which a lot of people are overlooking at this point. And that's a very important factor in this program. Will you try to continue that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and again, one of the things that I referenced in the uh, press conference was, he had he'd made tremendous strides in doing that and established a culture that our guys know they've got to go to class, they've got to go to tutoring. We want them to graduate with a meaningful degree so they can make tons of money after graduation and give it back to Fresno State football. If they don't go to class, do they play? Uh, well, they will be running on, on Wednesday mornings at 6. If they, if they are not very smart to uh, did not go to class, we have some different ways to uh, motivate them. If they continue to do what that, the they, they will play. What are the rules under your regime? I mean, if you, you have to go to class. Absolutely. There's, there's no or excuse you don't for play, this. Right? 
Absolutely. So they've got to be eligible. They've got to go to class. We have very simple rules. Yeah. If they have a tutoring uh, appointment, they've got to make it. Uh, what we've done is we, we've established some accountability teams. We've got eight uh, captains of these accountability teams. The first time, John, if you were to mess up, you're in trouble. You're running 6 in the morning on Wednesday. The next time How you mess up. How far do I have to run, Coach? Well, uh, <laughs> Coach Bose is in charge of our discipline. Okay. It's, it's something that's going to get your attention. I understand. I'm sorry. The, Go ahead. That's all right. The second time, your accountability team is going to run with you. So if you're making your buddies get up at 5.30 in the morning to run at 6, eventually you're either going to get with the program and go to class or those guys may have to deal with you. And if you're having problems in the class with mathematics, English, whatever the subject may be, I'm sure you have a team there to help that student. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Natalie Nakik and, and uh, our, our academic staff right. and the support service people do a tremendous job with our guys. My, my charge to our guys is take advantage of all the help that, that you're given when you're doing that and you still struggle if you're if you're struggling to get a C I'll be happy with you right. but with what the support they get if they're if they're making the effort we we anticipate they'll do much better than that at least they're trying you know that a absolutely yeah. show up to you know to work do your job give effort and, and things will take care of themselves right let me ask you you're in the middle of a recruiting season right now till the end of May you've got Tim McDonald Pete Germano, did I pronounce that yes. name right? Okay. And Joe Wade out there recruiting uh, from Sacramento all the way down to Bakersfield. Absolutely. What's the sales pitch from Fresno State right now to those potential recruits? Well, our, our sales pitch is this. You know, we've got a program that's going to play against the best in the country. We're going to give you a chance to play in front of your family and friends and graduate with a great degree. And so you don't have to go to different states to get all the things you want in a Division One program right here in the Valley. Right. You want to paint the valley red. Absolutely. I've heard that before. I heard that from Pat Hill, and that's a very uh, infamous line. Yeah. And you, But you literally want to do that. Oh, absolutely. The in, in, We've talked about it. The first week of recruiting, while we've got those three coaches that are primary recruiters, every coach on our coaching staff took part of the valley to go out and meet coaches. Whether they had players that are Division One prospects or not, we want those coaches to know this is a resource for them to come and that – for their players to understand that we're going to be looking at them every year. Let me ask you about your quarterback. Um, two words, Derek Carr. He could be better than his brother. How is he going to adjust to this new offense, do you think? So far, he's done a tremendous job. He's a very, yeah. very smart guy. Uh, he's got a lot of talent. And, and the thing that I've been really impressed with him is he's a tremendous leader. Very high character young man. Uh, he's a guy that gets it. He's a gym rat. When he's not in class, and I had to check his schedule because because we see him in the office up there watching tape all the time. Uh, but he's a four, was a 4.0 last semester, so he's taking care of business off the field, and on the field he's a guy that is a true true leader. So he's he's doing a great job with he this. He picks things up quickly then. Absolutely, which a quarterback has to do. Absolutely. And Robbie Rouse, we all know him from last year. Mm -hmm. Very talented guy on the field. Uh, talk about where he's going to fit in. Well, in, in our one back offense. Uh, he's a lot like a Darren Sproles type of a back. He's, he's not a real big guy, but extremely smart, extremely strong, can make a cut, and really kind of hides behind our offensive line and can and dart out. With our scheme, with the spreading people out, we're not going to have to knock a whole lot of people off the ball. We spread people out. He makes one, one guy miss. He's going to be going for a long way. Right. All right. We're going to continue our conversation with Coach Tim DeRuder here on Connect With Me. You're watching me, TV Fresno, on Comcast and 43.6. We're back in just a moment with our special of the day. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the out with the old, in with the new HD TV place. The low price, get it delivered before the big game place. Sharp 70-inch LED with built-in Wi-Fi and 1080p for a breathtaking 1080p HD experience is on sale at Ventura for only $24.99. For the appliances you want at the prices you can afford place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're working hard to be your place. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the mall. Taking care of laundry, taking too much of your time. Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, 
efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. Save now on Frigidaire's Advanced Affinity Laundry Pair. Let Frigidaire save you energy, water, and time. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. And back here live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. And I'm here with Rafi, and this is a beautiful Frigidaire freezer. All right, the big question I have about this freezer, Rafi, is how do you defrost it? <laughs> well, John, this is a, unlike the old freezer that used to be manual defrost, this is auto defrost. So you never have to defrost it. So I never have to worry about it? Never have to worry about it. It's, they call it auto defrost, frost free, no frost. All the terms are for that freezer. Yeah. All right, in uh, the freezers that I've had in the past, I've had to open the thing up, reach way in the back, move a bunch of stuff, maybe pull a shelf out, and adjust that temperature control. Do I have to do that with this? So let's look, John, see if there's a temperature control in this one. Do you see the temperature control? No, I, I actually just see a bunch of shelves in here. <laughs> there's no temperature control in that. Okay. You know where the temperature control is on this one? It is right here outside. It's easy reach. It has an LCD display, it has an up and down arrow, so you push the button up to get to 7, which is the highest uh, level, which is the most freezing level, or you go down low, which is the least. So after it freezes initially at 7, you bring it down to 2 or 3, and that's where you leave it. But that's not the only thing. This digital control has two other things that will do for you. It has two alarm systems. One of them is if you have the door open. Like, like a jar. Like a jar. This will sound the alarm for you, reminding you that, hey, you have this door open. Close it. Don't waste energy. The second alarm is if the temperature inside the freezer rises above 23 degrees, it will sound an alarm telling you there's a problem. Take care of that problem. All right, Rafi. The big question uh, is everyone's mind is what's the price on this one? This freezer sells for $629. Our promotional price is $499. And today, for Connect With Me viewers, we will offer a special warranty on this freezer, which is a 10 years on the compressor, which is the sealed system, the heart of the system. At no cost? At no cost, which is normally $80 value. Okay. And the price of this again? $499 with a 10-year free compressor warranty. Okay. That's the special. And also, I want to mention, this looks rather small in here, but you can get a pretty large capacity of food. You know, this looks small, but for your information, John, 14 cubic feet is pretty large. You can store... 35 pounds of meat in every cubic foot. So do the math, that'll probably give you about 480 pounds of meat. All right, $4 $4.99, special through tomorrow for the Connect With Me viewers. And also, that 10-year warranty is going to be free as I'm standing almost inside the freezer here. And that uh, is for the Connect With Me viewers. Good through noon tomorrow. By the way, you want to ask the question, how do you get the Ventura TV? Very simple. We're very close to the fairgrounds, very close to Selland Arena, and we're on Ventura Avenue just off of 180, 168, the 41 and 99, 10 to 16 minutes from anywhere in town. We're back with more with the Fresno State football coach, Tim DeRuder. By the way, I'm going to get Tim the uh, employee discount on this freezer in just a moment. We'll be back. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Warning, warning, danger, danger. A strange world is on MeTV. A world somehow like ours, but of incredible darkness and fear. What is the show called? It has been called many different names by many different cultures. Oh, I know. It's called Lost in Space. Saturday at 8, 7 central on MeTV. And welcome back to Connect With Me. I'm John Malos here with Coach Tim DeRuder of Fresno State. By the way, do you want that freezer? I can get you that employee <laughs> discount. Uh, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me ask you, you met with, uh, of course, uh, Dr. John Welty. He's the president of Fresno mm -hmm. State uh, upon arriving here. What did, I, I mean, I know you can't go into detail about what you guys talked about, but can you give us some nuts and bolts that we can take away? Well, one of the things that, that Dr. Welty was very clear about was the uh, academic strides that Coach Hill made, he wants to continue. And being an Air Force Academy graduate, uh, absolutely. I think guys can absolutely maximize their work in the classroom as well as on the football field. And so we're going to continue that tradition. All right. Are you, have you studied the schedule? Do you like the schedule that Fresno State has? Because I, I saw the schedule come out in the paper just a while back. And 
you know, you've got some tough games on here. You got Boise State, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. Uh, again, I'm a guy that's looking for challenges. And, and going into the Mountain West Conference for the first year, we know that it's a, it's a tremendous conference. I had been in it a couple different times, mm -hmm. coaching and playing in it. Uh, outside the conference, we open up at home on September the 1st against Weber State, a right. very good football championship subdivision school. And then we go up to Oregon. Uh, we go up to Eugene to play a really talented Oregon And in team. Colorado here. Colorado, a Pac-12 team coming right here to Bulldog Stadium. That's I'm a hoping, big team. Oh, absolutely. And we're hoping that uh, the red wave comes out in full force for that one. And then we go to Tulsa, uh, a Conference USA team that I believe they've won 10 games for the last five years. So they've done a tremendous job in that program. I know this is a question that a lot of people have on their minds. Can you beat Boise State <laughs> at Boise of all places? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the thing that, that Chris Peterson and his staff has done is they've established a really good program up yeah. there. They've not played against us and our staff in the, in the new 2012 uh, Fresno State Bulldogs, so we'll, we'll find out this fall. Will we be surprised as to how good your team might be? Well, I, it depends on your expectations, I guess. I expect us to be good. I expect our guys to play with a fire and a passion. Um, so if you're not you know, expecting that, then maybe you'll be surprised. But I think it's going to be a, a fun style for people to come watch. Jalen Saunders, of course, left. He went to <laughs> Oklahoma. How big a loss is that for the Fresno State Bulldogs? Well, you know, I, I don't know that it's going to be a real big loss, to be frank with you. Uh, this spring, okay. he was in our system. I think he's a tremendous young man. Uh, he thought that another system would fit him better. Uh, and, and so I told him, as, him and his father, I said, if you think someone else is, is where you need to be, then, then you know, you're, you're more than welcome to go. But uh, uh, we've got a, a tremendous group of receivers on offense and really good playmakers that I think will really fit our system. If we're expecting great things out of Fresno State, we're expecting great things out of the athletes, not only academic-wise, so they can succeed after they graduate from Fresno State, whether it be football or, or anything else, what's the one thing that you want them to take away from Fresno State once they leave your program? It doesn't matter what player it is, what student. Well, absolutely what you talked about, a degree from our university and, and a sense of giving back. Uh, again, our guys feel the support from the Red Wave. They, they feel the support of the community here in, in Fresno. I want them to have a sense that, hey, we're not on islands here. We're all part of this community, and if we have something, let's give back. And I want our players to all be able to do that. Have you talked to any alumni members? Uh, quite a few in the quite last few, few months. What's their, what's their response? What's their reaction at this point? I, I, I think they're all really excited. You know, again, as, as good of a job as Coach Hill's done, I think when you're anywhere for 15 years, people tend to get tired and it's like okay let's try another flavor of ice cream and, and they're, right. they're excited about the, the the new style that we're gonna be playing yeah. with yeah if I could add my two cents I don't know what it's worth probably two cents <laughs> <laughs> give this guy a chance all right because you know you, you can't expect too much too quickly in a new system a new coach a new football team basically you know I mean that's pretty much the message is it not uh, it, it is, but but again, as a coaching staff and our players, we expect to compete for championships, and right. we're not gonna we're not gonna you know accept anything less. We want our guys going out competing every single day, and right. you've got to in college football train every single day to get ready for those 12 opportunities in the fall. But thing, I guess what I'm saying is things may take time. Of course, you're trying every day. Of course, you're doing your best. You're getting the players in on time. They're giving it 110 percent, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm but give it time. Well, ab absolutely. I mean, we won four games last year and lost nine. So it's it's not like we're taking over an undefeated team here. But I, I like the progress we made this spring. I really like our coaching staff. And uh, I, I think people will be pleasantly surprised. You're a great guy. I love your upbeat tempo. I, I If I played football, I'd want to play for you. Well, I appreciate that, John. Thank you very <laughs> much right. for your time. All right. Coach Tim DeRuiter, good luck to you for the Thank season. You. And come back again when you get a chance. I appreciate it. Stay right here. All right. Uh, I'm John Malos. You're watching Connect with me. Tomorrow, it's Entertainment Thursday. Again, thanks to our coach, Tim DeRuiter, and good luck to him and the Fresno State Bulldogs. Wait for it!
Exclusively brought to you by Ventura TV.